If you clicked on this video, then you're in luck. If you are building a gaming computer in 2025 and you're looking for a decent gaming rig that can beat a PlayStation 5, this channel is where you're at. You're in the right place. Now, if you just pay attention and lock in, you'll be able to get your gaming PC running up in less than an hour. And if I don't fill out that criteria, you don't have to like the video and subscribe. But if you can build it, you have to hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications and like the video. What's going on guys? It's your boy Nate and in today's video, we're doing a complete build guide to how to build a gaming computer in 2025. Now for today's build, we're building an AM5 base platform gaming computer. And our budget for today's build is around $1,500 or $1,300 to $1,500, depending on when you get your parts. I bought, I bought some of these parts during Black Friday, so I did get a discount. Yeah, I did get a discount on these. So, um, yeah, this is a, like a pretty good gaming computer for 2025. It's a big budget, so if you guys don't have enough money to get this computer, I will be doing a budget gaming computer build guide as well in the near future. So I'd say in about a week or two when I order the parts and when they all come in. In this complete guide, I will be going over how to build the gaming computer, how to set it up, how to download Windows, and how to make sure everything is working. Now, a couple tools that you're gonna need for you to start is you know, a screwdriver, of course, a small one and a medium sized one, preferably. Some pliers to help with cable management. If you have like zip ties or whatever and you just need to break them to fix some cables. Thermal paste, I don't really have like a big tube <laughs> because you know, you're just gonna be using a little bit. Let me go into light, there we go. And another one, this is optional, but it makes your life so much easier, an electric screwdriver. Now this one, I got this one on Amazon for about 30 bucks. And, and I have an eBay shop, which I have all the tools that I use in my videos where you can directly support me. The link will be in the description. I'm gonna show like a little screenshot of the eBay store. That's where you can guys can also buy computer parts or computers off of me that directly help the channel. And you'll, my, you might need a bowl, you know, to hold your screws or whatever. This is just a bowl I just stole from the kitchen. So it just makes life easier. So let's get started with the PC build and we're gonna go to the motherboard, CPU and RAM and storage. So starting our build, we're gonna have the AM5 76. 100X. For our motherboard, we have the AORUS B650 Elite AX. For our RAM, we have the Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 kit. For our storage, we have the Samsung 990 Pro. For our graphics card, we have the RTX 4060 Ti, and I painted it white. For our power supply, we have the Corsair CX750 Watt M. And for our cooler, we have the Corsair 240mm AIO. All right, in order for you guys to start, you guys need your motherboard, CPU, RAM, and storage, of course, because without these, your computer won't work. So we're just gonna fix up our setup and I'm gonna start with the motherboard. All right, so we have our motherboard and to start off, we have our CPU and on our motherboard, I'm gonna sh lay, like show you guys all the components. So just looking at it, it looks very confusing, but once you really pay attention, then it starts to make sense because when I first started building computers, I already had the knowledge of it, but it was very confusing. So starting in the very top slash middle, this is where our CPU is going. This is the CPU for reference. It'll come in a, a small box like this. So this is the lever that you use to open the CPU, like um, the thing where it holds it and you just push it up and you'll just put the CPU here. Right here is our, our RAM slots. This is where you put the ATX power for your power supply. This is our M.2 slot for the SSD. There's extra ones right here. This is our PCIe slot for our graphics card. This is the PCIe slot for the graphics card. There's two extra ones if you have if you're running SLI. Back here are is the IO shield slash um, motherboard ports where you have your Wi-Fi, audio, USB, and gigabyte ethernet. Right here is our CMOS battery. This tracks the date and time for our BIOS. And if you need to reset it, you just flip it and it'll come out. And, and on the bottom and on the side and top are our pins where we plug in fan controller, fan hubs, and ports for the case. So to start out, we just have to put our CPU in. Um, it's kind of difficult to put this up. Okay, I'm gonna get our CPU and I'm gonna show you guys how to put it in the motherboard. So you just take your CPU out. I could barely see. So you take your CPU out and 
Make sure you line it up with the corner on your motherboard. It should go in. I think it just goes in straight with AM5. CPUs, yeah, you just put it in straight. There we go, and it should be good. Next up is our, our is RAM and storage. I'm gonna do the M.2 SSD because it's a bit easier than the RAM. Both are pretty easy, but you can you guys can follow my order. Either or is fine, we're gonna do, we're gonna do RAM. So this is our RAM. We have the Corsair 32 gigabyte Venging kit. It's an RGB kit and it looks really good. I got this for about 90 bucks. Prices and links to um, purchase this specific computer it will be in description, but prices change like weekly, so not not all the prices are gonna be um, similar, similar to what I got them for. Okay, once you guys got your, your RAM sticks, you're gonna go to your RAM slots on your motherboard and you're gonna open up the second and the fourth levers for the RAM. And you're gonna got you guys are gonna line them up to make sure this little notch is gonna line up with this slit on the motherboard. And once you hear the click and you can't remove it, then it's good to go. And then you just line it up with the second one and boom. There we go. Next up is our storage. You're just gonna unscrew this right here, lift it up and unscrew this right here. Sometimes you'll have like a, un, a screwless mother or a SSD mount, but I just took mine off because it was annoying and I didn't know how to use it. And you're gonna get your SSD. I have the Samsung 990 Pro. This is about a hundred bucks and it's one terabyte and it works pretty good, nice fast speed. So when you get your SSD, you're gonna hold it down with one finger and then screw it in with the next, like this. Push your screw down almost all the way, not too tight and you should be good to go. And if your SSD mounts have a thermal pad like this, make sure to take off any plastics and stuff like that before you turn your computer on because sometimes they will melt. All right, that's it for our motherboard. Let's get our mounting brackets for our AIO. So you guys are gonna, if you guys get the same AIO that I get, you're gonna get a thing like this, a little screw thing like this. There's gonna be a thin side and a thick side. You're gonna screw the thick side inside the motherboard because that's the, the correct threading. I'm just gonna screw it in until it stops screwing in. That should be it for our motherboard preparation. Our case is the Corsair 3500X and it's a good mid-range tower to fit any component. So let's open it up. Take the glass off, put it somewhere safe so it doesn't break. I'm gonna take off all the panels because I need as much space as I can get. Next, we're gonna put our power supply in our case. For our power supply, we have the Corsair 750 watt power supply, and it's modular, so we're gonna have to choose which cables that we need. I'm gonna show you guys which cables we need. So our power supply is gonna have our 24 pin and our CPU, CPU um, 8 pin. For our um, power supply, we need we need it. So for our motherboard, it has an eight pin plus a four pin connector. You only need the extra four pin if you're gonna be overclocking. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it anyway, just in case. Um, you need your GPU cable, um, a SATA cable, if you guys have fans or anything like that, like a fan hub. Yo, is it, is it just me or when you guys, when I build PCs, I just like saving the boxes. Do you guys do that? Let me know in the comments, bro. Cause I don't know, the boxes, they just look too good to be going away, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Cables, so it'll it'll label it for you. PCIe slash CPU. You just plug it in. You hear it click. So let's just do that for the rest of this. And I saw the cables for our power supply, and we'll hook it up to the case. Make sure you guys have the fan facing downwards. So this is our fan hub, it's already connected it to the case, 
I guess, yeah. We're gonna connect the SATA power to the power supply to make sure it works. So it's connected and we're just gonna tuck it away and never see it again. Next, we're gonna be mounting our motherboard to the case. So what you guys wanna do is line up your IO shield with the back of the case and make sure the motherboard standoffs on the case are lined up with the motherboard. And then all you're gonna do is just screw in each hole except for the middle one. So you're gonna fill up all eight holes. There's gonna be nine of them and you're gonna fill up all eight of them. Don't screw in the one in the middle. You guys can your, use your electric screwdriver for this part, but it's better to hand tighten them so you don't over tighten your screws. Yep, you just... Find a little hole and screw it in. All right, next we're gonna get our fans and radiator. For our power supply, I have these cable extensions that are gonna make our power, black power supply cables look way nicer. For our AIO, we have the IQ H100i Elite Capellex XT. Now this is an all white cooler. Looks nice. Let's get it on our CPU. So we got our two Corsair fans to put onto the AIO. In the box, you should come. It should come with radiator screws, and you just screw them. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to mount it onto your case. All right, so uh, get your cables and just tuck them in the back for now. And when you're screwing stuff in, make sure you screw in like a crisscross pattern so everything is tightened correctly. It just helps everything have equal force. As you see, it's on there tight. We're gonna get another fan as well. We're gonna put this fan back here. We're gonna position this fan as exhaust so the air is going out that way. All right, we're on our last fan. I'm gonna just throw it in. All right, we got some thermal paste on the CPU, and we're just gonna plug everything in. This is going in the back of the case of everybody's favorite part about building computers, cable management. Now we're gonna put the cable extensions on the 24 pin connector. Once you turn your case around, you're gonna take the, the extra connector and you're gonna plug it into the 24 pin of the power supply. You're gonna repeat these steps for the CPU and GPU eight pin connectors. Now you're gonna plug in the 24 pin into the motherboard and you're gonna cable management to the back of the case. Next up, we're gonna do the CPU 8 pin connector. It's usually on the top left of the motherboard near the CPU and you're gonna plug it in. This is what it looks like and it'll be over here in the corner. But I'm gonna try anyway. That's what it looks like. 
we're just gonna now i'm just connecting usb c usb and hd audio and the front panel headers to make sure that our buttons on our case works and our final task is to cable manage all these cables in the back of the case most of the times if you don't feel like doing it you could just stuff them in the back of your case which is what i did but also if you have a lot of zip ties or the little twisty things that you can get in the packages you can use those to put the cables to the side of the case to make sure they look more neat but depending on your case or if it's a glass case sometimes you might not even see the cables or you can push the cables in the power supply basement near the bottom to make sure nobody sees the cables And for our last part, the GPU. An unboxing for you guys, the RTX 4060 Ti. Now this isn't a regular 4060. This is actually custom painted by me. I custom painted in white, and it came out pretty good, honestly. It blends in really good. I didn't paint the back because it's mostly metal, but if you guys want a tutorial on how to paint your GPU shroud, um, I'm gonna do a tutorial on that pretty soon. I might paint my own GPU, just show you guys how to do it. It's a, it's a nice tutorial, gives your GPU a nice clean look, especially if you're doing an all white build like this. You're gonna have to take the screws off on the PCIe Express slots, usually the second and third one, so you have enough space to put your GPU. And then you just pull back the PCIe slot, it's gonna be like around here. Just pull it back and slide it in. Boom. And then close it up, screw, screw the screws back in from where you unscrew them and then plug in your PCIe power and then you're good to go. That's it for the hardware side and then I'm gonna show you guys how to download Windows as well. And that's the full PC complete. I'm gonna show you guys some B-roll of the PC turned on and yeah. That's the PC basically completed. All right, we're gonna try and turn this PC on and we got a boot. All our RGB fans should be turning on just about now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus the RAM and the housing unit for the AIO. Now this is the full PC, but yeah, all the fans are running. Everything looks perfect. After about a good 30 to 40 minutes, I finally got Windows able to install on this freaking PC. I don't know why it took forever, but I finally got it. I don't have a product key, I'll activate it later. I might just buy a key. Thank you. 